of Allah the most beneficent and the most merciful dear students assalamu alaikum how are you all dear students i welcome you in pakistan international school taif and this is virtual learning system for the session 2020 and in this we are going to study biology for grade second year dear students we have started chapter 22 that is about inheritance and in inheritance today's topic is polygenic inheritance and related with polygenic inheritance that is epistasis dear students polygenic inheritance is actually the deviation of mendel's laws of inheritance we have seen before mendel's law of inheritance and then in that we have seen that the uh, dominant gene uh, will show of its characteristics in the next generation or the characteristics have been controlled by one gene but in polygenic inheritance we will see that some characteristics are controlled by more than one gene poly means more genetic means genes so in this inheritance we will see some examples of such type of traits and characters like in which they are controlled by polygenes so that inheritance is called polygenic inheritance so some traits have large number of alternative phenotypes that have small or less striking differences so they have continuous variations such as height weight skin color eye color seed color in wheat also so they are they cannot be encoded by a single gene with two alleles so multiple alleles of a single gene cannot make a large number of phenotype so multiple alleles we have seen in the previous classes that in which one gene is controlled by more than two alleles so like in blood group of human but here the traits are encoded by alleles of two or more different gene gene pairs but they are also present on different loci because one gene is present on one locus and the other gene pair is present on the other locus and that influence the additive like uh, the trait in additive way so um the polygenic inheritance is actually continuous variation continuous or non continuous or discontinuous variations are like the differences in the traits how like if the variations are expressed by the different phenotypes for a characteristics so like uh, very uh, like we see the variations or differences in the phenotypes characteristics as continuous when it exhibits a large range of phenotypes ranging from one extreme to another and discontinuous or non continuous means that usually only has two forms so in this polygenic inheritance it contributes to only continuous variations where there is a large number of variations in the phenotype in the same phenotype is present so let's talk about very common example of human skin color 
Human skin color is a result of polygenic inheritance and it is controlled by three or four genes. And genes are having definitely the pair of alleles as well. So the skin color depends on the amount of black pigment called melanin. We know that melanin produces the skin colors in a human being. Each gene has alleles which promote melanin production and alleles which do not. So thus there is a wide range of phenotypes possible ranging from all the alleles promoting melanin production. When there is melanin production, more melanin production means blackish in color, skin color. And uh, if uh, none alleles promoting melanin production, it means there is white color. So as we see the color uh, or uh, the skin color, so that is continuous variation in human skin color because it is representing in the continuous uh, variation, not in discontinuous variation like it's change from uh, one extreme to another and there is a great variation between them. So you can see this is uh, the medium one. Uh, and uh, then if um, less melanin production is there so lighter color and then whitish or albino and if more melanin production so dark and black colors are there so in skin color there are three types of genes We talk about gene and that is sorry gene a that is involved in the permanent survival proliferation or migration of what we write milano sites number two that gene gene we write it gene b and that a encodes the enzyme tyrosinase and that tyrosinase is involved in the production of melanin from tyrosine tyrosine is amino acid then we will see the next gene gc like so it's primarily responsible for determination determining whether pheomelanin or eumelanin is produced in humans now these are two types of melanin so it is responsible for production of two types of melanin so one is pheomelanin, pheomelanin, and the other one is eumelanin, melanin. Now pheomelanin is a pink to red color like that is present in the lips, and and a eumelanin that is the yellowish grayish or that we can say the brownish color it produces the darker color so you melanin actually this one is the uh, melanin which produces the darker color in the human body so let's see that if a uh, parent that is negro and albino Albino means there is no melanin, so if though no melanin, so they are represented by with small a, small a, and small b, small b. So if they are highly melanin, like a darkish color, so there is, uh, they are present uh, with capital A, capital A, capital B, capital B. Like here, the organism like uh, the skin color is controlled by more than one type of genes 
so if gametes a is having a b and uh, from here small is small b so mulatto color is appeared in the next generation and this mulatto means uh, like uh, a brownish color which uh, the people of asia or Indi indian subcontinent are having then we'll see the same again like uh, though melanin production is regulated by uh, three genes as above for convenience we consider only two pairs of genes here capital a capital b and small a small b that is the gene pair but actually that is uh, like uh, we have seen gene a gene b and gene c so we can write uh, um, a b and c capital a capital b and capital c so we can write here capital a capital b and capital c if they are found in like a pair allelic pair so we write them like this okay so now we will see the variation in the uh, skin pigmentation in humans so we can see when these three like uh, these these three pairs present in one organism it means that uh, capital a capital b and capital c they are dominant so it means the person is the darkest one as the number of dominant genes are dominant alleles are present in that organism it means as much the darker color is there and if the recessive colors are appearing so it means uh, uh, as like the recessive alleles are present over there so we can say that as uh, the lighter color is present over there so uh, now we'll see skin pigmentation in humans like um, in we see yes here first so or we can see that parent generation that is the first one small a small b and small c that is very lighter capital a capital b and capital c that is very dark so these are the pure breeding like we have done in mendel laws now in uh, like f1 sorry this is f1 generation in f1 generation if we see this is uh, f1 generation so in f1 generation you say uh, c like one a is capital one a is small one K a b is capital one is small and one c is capital one c is small so this is the f1 generation in, in f1 generation you can see that all are um, having one capital and one small it means three capital and three small it means the darker color and the lighter color is balanced and the person is having um, this color this is mulatto color and uh, when uh, both of the mulatto persons are just get married and cross like they form the gametes male and female gametes are produced from that it means self fertilization uh, so uh, we can have the gametes like this capital a capital b capital c capital a capital b small c like this one will cross with this one with this one then capital a will cross with small b small c uh, and capital b small c and like capital a will interact with all of these uh, like uh, capital a will interact with all these or with cross with all these um, alleles to make the gametes like so we can see the different and also there must be cap a capital or small b capital or small c capital or small it must be in uh, every gamete like here you can see a b c a b c a b c a b c whether it is capital or small so we can uh, like have um, all a type of gametes so when we cross all female at the uh, left side and then uh, this is up or that male sperms will be then they fertilize then we can have almost 64 chances of uh, 
producing of different uh, like uh, pigmentation color or uh, pigmentation of the skin in the organisms in F2 generation. Okay, now uh, here you can see when capital A, capital B, capital C and uh, with male and female that is you can see this one and this one when both of them fertilize so we'll get a very darker color because all are dominant so when all alleles are dominant so that is the darker person very black when this small a small b and small c small a small b all are recessive so the person is very light in color that is albino, albino means no pigmentation is there okay so now from darker black to uh, very lighter albino there are different categories of skin pigmentation so how you can just do do this one just count the dominant alleles when you count the dominant alleles between these uh, this one you can see this one and this one like male and female when they cross the gametes are crossed so uh, you have to count the number of dominant alleles then we can find uh, our uh, like uh, the skin pigmentation uh, how much is there in the organism so if we just see these two so there is six dominant six dominant means that is the highest extreme condition of the pigmentation then in the next one we can see this one capital a capital b small c capital a capital b small it means four are uh, there but first we have to just multiply this one with all these then this one with all these then this one female egg with all these sperms when this one with all these and then with this one with all multiply with this one then you can get the correct answer okay let's uh, do it one more time like if we multiply this one capital a capital with this one so it means we are having six dominant if we multiply this abc with this one so we are having one two three and four five dominant when we just multiply this capital a capital b capital c with this one we are also having the five uh, dominant when we multiply this one with this capital a small b small c so we are having four dominant then again we are having Mm, uh, like three here and two dominant here five dominant one dominant here and three here so four dominant one dominant here and three dominant here four dominant and one uh, no dominant is here and three dominant so this will be three but when we write here so you can write capital a uh, small a capital b a capital b small b capital c small c so three dominant and three recessive at this condition so like that you have to multiply all one by one female gametes with all male gametes so we will get these answers so here the pigmentation is uh, given you can see very darker in six one as the number of dominant alleles is going to be uh, lesser in number so the color become lighter and lighter in the last we can see there is no uh, pigmentation due to uh, like uh, no addition of dominant alleles. now here we can see the dominant is uh, like given by uh, this black dot and uh, the represent alleles recessive alleles is represented by uh, empty white dot so um, here in p like uh, f2 generation is given here this is not f1 this is f2 generation so here this is f2 generation in f2 we can see that 20 out of 64 out of 64 are at number 3 number 3 means that is mulatto 
like which is intermediate when we go this way it means dominant alleles are decreasing so we are having in the last one out of 64 having the all dominant alleles and we are having the darker skin and if we go this way it means all uh, we are decreasing dominant and uh, increasing recessive one so here here increasing like uh, dom uh, dominant and here increasing um, a recessive one like uh, this empty circles so in the last we are having no dominant and all recessive so it means that is one out of 64 and that is albino so we can have this one also the highest peak that is mullet okay so now we will see f2 generation if we just take two genes not three genes before we have seen three genes if we see two genes so we will have this kind of uh, um, like Punnett square and in that we will take ratio 1 ratio 4 ratio 6 ratio 4 ratio 1 like here is the um, when two polygenic are considered so we will have in the ratio 1 ratio 4 ratio 6 ratio 4 ratio 1 so if we are having polygenic uh, three polygenes so we can have the 20 is mulatto and uh, one side 15 means one side 15 means that is uh, darker more darker six and darker than this one and one is the darkest color at this side we are having the lighter 15 and more lighter uh, than 15 there is six and one is the lightest color that is albino now i'll take the example here the wheat kernel uh, color kernel means it's a seed color so here we can have wheat kernel wheat kernel color so that is the example so as the same as we have seen the human being pigmentation so there are variety of pigmentations here so the darker red and the white color white means there is no pigmentation and the darker means the reddish means there is most pigmentation so when we cross multiply so we get intermediate red like lighter red in color or intermediate red in color and that is a self cross and uh, we will get the result in f2 generation uh, 63 red and one white out of 64 but the pigmentation is different in that darker red then moderate red red intermediate red light and very light red or like pinkish color and then we are having white color that is also controlled by uh, three genes so the polygene there we can give the name a b c or we can give the name r1 r2 so if we just take this one so we are having if we just take two uh, polygenes so we are having the same four six and oh, one four six four one and if we are having more like uh, three polygenes so we are having the same uh, like inheritance 1 6 15 20 and uh, 15 6 and 1 also like we are having in pigmentation in the body so this is all uh, uh like uh, we can say the pennant square pennant square of uh, like wheat um, kernel uh, grain color or kernel color and in which uh, in for f2 generation 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 type of gametes eight type of gametes are uh, male gametes are uniting with a type of female gametes so we are having 64 type of characteristics in the past it will come this one uh, lightish or white in color and here is the darker red in color dear students the second topic of today is epistasis epistasis is uh, just studied under uh, polygenic inheritance because it is almost not almost just little uh, similarities with 
polygenic in polygenic uh, lots uh, we can say that uh, more than uh, two pairs of uh, um, genes or uh, more than two genes uh, are controlling uh, the correct um, same trait in epistasis is the same but there is a difference that uh, um, one gene is uh, like a controlled uh, one gene of the locus is controlled by the other gene which is present on different locus but in polygenic uh, the genes are present on the same locus but here the genes are present on different locus so epistasis is the greek word which means standard word it was first studied in 1909 by batson discovered masking effect like uh, one gene which is located on the, the one uh, the locus that is masking the effect of the gene which is present on the other locus how does it happen like an interaction between a pair of loci in which phenotypic effect of one locus depends on the genotype at the second locus how does it happen so uh, we'll talk about in the next slide so genes whose phenotype are expressed these are called epistatic genes and which are suppressed these are called hypostatic genes epistatic or inhibiting gene and which are suppressed they are called hypostatic genes so the this is the type of polygenic inheritance where the alleles are uh, at one gene locus can hide or prevent the expression of alleles at the second gene locus so allele of one locus inhibits and masks the effect of allele at a different locus so we can have the examples of labrador retriever in animals and lotharus uh, odoratus like sweet pea in the plant so we'll just talk about in a few minutes so um, if we just see that dominance in epistasis is the same thing but that is having the differences dominance means it involves the intra allelic gene interaction in one gene allele uh, one allele is masking the characteristic of other allele uh, for the same trait but in epistasis it allows or involves the inter allelic interaction like one allele of one gene which is present on one locus that is masking or highlighting the effect of the other uh, allele of the other gene which is present on other locus so that is the main difference one allele hides the effect of other allele at the same gene but here one gene hides the effect of other gene at a different gene locus very good example of that is Bombay blood group. Bombay blood group, that is the same ABO uh, blood group, but that uh, is the first described phenotype in uh, uh, Bombay city of India. That's why it is called Bombay uh, phenotype also. So here the blood group of human being, that is A, B, and O. ABO blood group. Uh, we can just add what color could be changed okay so abo blood group system that like um, means that antigens of a b are present on red blood cells if not present that is blood group o that is uh, like controlled by an other antigen with uh, is known as H antigen. So individuals with the rare Bombay phenotype, we know H H A H H, means when this is representing in a recessive condition. Like recessive means if this antigen or the gene H is not present, it is not making the antigen H. If it is not making or uh, producing this H antigen, it means that is small H, small H, and then the person is having blood group O. 
as a result they cannot make a or b antigen on their red blood cells so they have anti h in the plasma and consequently they can donate r b c s uh, to remember of the a b o blood group system and cannot receive any member of the a b c s like this is a cross matching of uh, the blood group so the abo genotype which is present on the chromosome number 9 that also depends upon another gene h which is present on chromosome number 9 19 ab o oh, blood group genes are present on chromosome number 9 but h antigen uh, gene is present on 19 chromosome number 19 out of 46 chromosomes so that is like locus is totally different so that uh, h substance is uh, pre, uh, like um, appear or uh, like produced like while h gene is present so that h is uh, h gene or h substance or h antigen is the precursor to a and b antigens so if the person is having blood group b so it must produce the enzyme b that modifies the h substance to become the antigen b so here we can see in the diagram that is h substance h antigen okay h antigen what happened here if red uh, like uh, red blood cells they are having uh, like um, uh, the gene that is located on chromosome number 9 if gene a is present it means it is producing antigen a and with the help of antigen h it will modify into like uh, here we can see antigen uh, h is there so with that this one this one is for uh, like uh, blood group a so this h antigen uh, is modified with the help of this antigen a to form the proper protein or antigen a which is present on the red blood cells like that this one is antigen b which is attached with h and then they are like uh, appear or they are just attached with uh, uh, red blood cells and they will form b blood group if like uh, now h antigen is present in the blood but there is no antigen of a and b over there so that will not that will not be modified and will not attach with red blood cell when it will not be attached with red blood cell it means there is no blood group no antigen a and no antigen b although it is present in the blood but it will not attach for attaching this because Uh, the antigen a and b like this one and this one they will not attach directly with uh, red blood cells they will attach with the help of h antigen so it h antigen they are present in the blood group but they will not attach with this um, red blood cells until h uh, like antigen a or b is not present in the blood group it means the genes are not making this one so we can say that now the phenotype is h h like that is not a uh, um, like highlighting itself in the blood so that's why the blood group is o so that a and b attachment is depending upon what h antigen okay so for uh, that a few cause that is a nucleotide that is very important for that h uh, antigen to just attach or with this a and b or attach uh, look from here with the uh, red blood cells so that is very important so if it is not present so it means h antigen is useless so we can see that uh, h it like small h small h phenotype is present and there is blood group 
own. So now we will see liberator uh, retrievers. In that we will see uh, that there are three coat colors. One is black, other is brown and other is yellow color. Black that is represented by capital B, capital B, capital B, small b. So the B is dominant so it will represent as a black so small b small b that is recessive so in the form of recessive it will be represent but there is another uh, the third uh, we can say the third coat color is also present over there that is called yellow coat or yellow labs or yellow labrador it means no dark pigment in the fur when this yellow uh, gene is present that is present on another locus of the same chromosome and that is uh, represented in the we can say in the recessive form if uh, recessive form small e small e this small b small b is for small b small b is for uh, brown color capital B or here can be small b or capital B they uh, is representing the black color uh, here you can see okay but what is the difference if the other gene E is producing in the other locus so this gene will be highlighted and mask the effect of um, that uh, chocolate color or black color pigments so it means these colors maybe they will be present in the uh, dominant form or in the recessive form that will be masked in the presence of small e small e in the when it will form in the recessive form so here you can see the differences in the uh, their structure so here we can see that is um, uh, like f1 generation in which there is black and there is yellow so smally smally means that is masking the effect of this chocolate color so it will represent so all will be black uh, when this black again they will be uh, uh, for f2 generation they will uh, be like uh, self fertilized so we can see this smally is present here this small is it means they are carriers of this small e so they that will be highlighted uh, here in one two in three and four form it means the dark colors like here 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 uh, yes and uh, and that is in the three yes three one two capital b capital b uh, capital b small b capital b small b small b small b so that will be in uh, the uh, like recessive form and that will be highlighted so that will be in so some of them is not represented here because here for 16 will be formed so here nine uh, like crosses are there so uh, so the, in the result we will get at after two of two generation nine black three chocolate and four yellow colored dogs now we'll see uh, having the uh, epistatic example in the plants that is the flower color of lethrus odorotus odoratus so that is uh, sweet pea flowers that is having the purple color that is the dominant but that is controlled by an other gene which is present on the different locus that is Um, so purple is dominant and white is recessive so if the third pigment that is we can say the complementary epistatic we can say like that um, the third that is um, the third gene which is present on the different locus uh, that is called substrate a and if that is not uh, like be present it will be in the recessive form so we can say the flowers are not purple they will be white in color so here we can see see uh, sorry here we can see it's 
first capital C small c capital P small p that is all purple flowers that is f1 generation now we'll take is f2 generation purple color flower and though again purple color flower they will be self fertilized and we will get this for, uh, like uh, gametes when these gametes are uh, self fertilized uh, so what we'll see capital c capital c capital p capital p like all purple flowers all purple all purple or purple all purple so now here we can see when the small p like if or the third ali uh, third gene is not expressing itself so whether c is capital or p is capital here all will be white in color so white colorless means slightly whitish to colorless uh, flowers will be formed there will be no purple like if both of the alleles are present in the recessive form you can see small p small p here small p small p here small c small c small c small c small p small p small c small c small p small p so they will be colorless flowers so we will get ratio 9 is to 7 ratio so they are having in the exams it can be uh, they are having different ratio uh, 9 is to 7 ratio we will get or we can see So if the colorless uh, precursor that is uh, like a controlled by substrate A that is allele A to produce an intermediate colorless product which on getting activated by the dominant allele of the second gene B. If this allele is uh, recessive the colorless pigment will be produced like uh, there will be no pigmentation the flower will be colorless when the colorless precursor to will be highlighted with allele b that will be dominant so then there will be purple colored flowers so the second gene b results in the formation of anthocyanin anthocyanin is the pigment which produces purple color so that is called complementary gene interaction like two or more than two genes are mm, gonna uh, having the complementary effect which is controlled by uh, now one gene which is present on other locus so that um, is uh, nine is to three uh, nine is to seven will be uh, like uh, will be we can say the ratio of um, this this epistatic in the plants so uh, the flower color colored flowers anthocyanin that is pigment that is produced by uh, the functional enzymes from both genes so white color flowers when there is um, uh, capital c capital c small p small p is there so p enzyme is not functional that's of no anthocyanin and there will be white flowers if small c small c and capital p or capital p or capital p small p they're white colors again because c enzyme is not fun not functional now so no anthocyanin will be formed if both small c small c small p small p then means no c and p enzymes are functional so no anthocyanin pigment is formed and no uh, color is there so white color flower will be there so these type of genes in which one gene complements the action of the other gene that is called uh, complementary genes or complementary uh, um, uh, we can say uh, complementary epistatic gene interaction we can also say so the recessive alleles in this case are epistatic in nature and this type of stasis is called duplicate or recessive um, application uh, epistasis duplicate means when any of the uh, enzyme whether p or c any of one is not produced so the flower will be uh, white no pigmentation is there so that is like one uh, gene is controlling the effect uh, phenotypic effect of uh, which is present on the other locus
so dear students that's it for today i hope you understood that is although a complicated one but um, interesting as well so inshallah we will continue this um, chapter in the next lecture also wish you all the best allah hafiz